People, there is a lot of weather that's been happening here in South Florida. Let me tell you, we've been getting tropical depression after tropical depression. It has been making things completely difficult for me. So I thought, hey, here's a good video for those of you who keep sulcata and leopard tortoises. Some of you may keep them in the Northeast where you actually get high humidity and a lot of rain. Some of you may be in the Midwest and some of you may be down here in Florida. So how do we keep these animals healthy down here in Florida? What do we do to kind of keep these guys from getting sick or possibly, you know, floating away? Uh, don't mind me as I walk in here, I need to grab a rake. Uh, I'm not even gonna tell you where I'm standing right now. It's a secret. It's a secret. You'll have to watch the video. There it is, but it's a secret. Um, anyway, let me grab my rake. I also am gonna grab a broom. But we are gonna see different tortoises today. And we are, of course, gonna start out with my leopards, leprechauns, uh, and then we're gonna head on over to the sulcatas. We have not seen our sulcatas in a while, have we kids? Um, and I wanna make sure we visit them because it's starting to rain yet again. I want to, excuse me, I want to make sure that we go over this stuff. So here we go. All right, so these guys got a little bit of Missouri today. They got a little bit of food. Um, and uh, right now, you could see my snow leopards are doing well. Now these tortoises came to me from two different spots, three actually. Uh, two of them came from the Midwest. Uh, I believe it was up in Minnesota. Um, thing is, is that Minnesota can get pretty darn humid. And so those animals in the summer were outdoors in a naturalistic enclosure and then brought in during uh, the winter time. Uh, there's a little gal hanging out there, and then we've got a few more over here. What I do with the leopard tortoises is you'll notice they're kind of up on a slope. So when it rains, the water kind of drains out. Uh, except, of course, if you look back at that older video from a couple weeks ago, you have to make sure you continually clear this out. All this was mulched, <laughs> and uh, of course the mulch just kind of flew by and kind of blocked this becomes a dam. Uh, there are my red foots. These are a tortoise species that are used to high humidity, so there's really no issues. Um, you know, while we're here, let me show you what's going on. Um, just to show you how much water we've got. I've got my rubber boots on. You remember when this was dry, just about, this thing was almost completely dried up. And now it is overflowing, to say the least. Uh, I know the fly rivers and the badiger that are in here are extremely happy. Uh, Hercules lives out here. Uh, this is where the sulcatas used to live, the whole group, but I moved them to another area because as we'll see, it stays higher and drier. Uh, we're gonna get to work on that iguana enclosure too, but look at this. There's water just kind of everywhere. There's water out there, and this is not even the, you know, as crazy as it has been. Or in the past, during hurricanes, this whole back area will flood out. So um, I really don't put uh, any tortoises back there. To be honest, probably gonna be doing a lot more turtles there in the future because I can dig a pond and they're happy to be in the water. So back to the leopards. What'll happen is if we get a few days of rain, I really don't do much, I don't bring them in because they are acclimated. They've been doing well, they're eating well. I've been not seeing, I haven't seen any respiratory issues. These guys have been acclimated. Uh, but what'll happen is I'll bring them into their house and shut them in, turn on the heat lamps so they can dry out and basically just, you know, keep the rain off of them. I don't know if it's necessarily the rain or the humidity that happens afterwards that could be uh, detrimental, detrimental to their respiratory system if they're not acclimated you figure his face is only a couple inches off the ground and that ground is hot and humid and so that may not be the best thing for them what's funny though is in uh certain parts of africa where the leopard tortoises are from they do get a lot of rain that rain then disappears uh it kind of dries up fairly quickly here is our leprechauna the hybrid and same scenario with these guys these guys do not have an area where the water just stands. It'll rain and it sheds the water very, very quickly. Here is one of the South African leopard tortoises. I really love these guys. 
Um, I always say when people are interested in a leopard tortoise in Florida, you have to make sure that that tortoise grew up in Florida uh, or at the very least that animal comes from a humid area. So many times people will order an animal from Arizona, California, um, and that animal is not acclimated and therefore there could be very, there could be problems uh, when the animal starts to be put outside. So always try and buy it from your own state and that's the best thing to do for them. Two more leprechauns. These guys again had a little chow down earlier. And let's see our female, our gal over here. Here she is. How beautiful is she? Again, South African leopard tortoise. Uh, this is the, the Stigmachelis pardalis pardalis. This is not Babcockeye. Uh, so this is the South African species or subspecies of leopard tortoise. So very cool. And she just hangs out in here. Now, being that we're probably gonna have rain over the next few days, I may pull these guys in and put them into the shed as well. And again, put them under heat lamps just so that it's uh, a little bit drier for them and more comfortable. But they are definitely more uh, adapted. They've been raised up in Florida. I believe uh, the leprechauns are fairly, um, in the short time that I've had them, they are a robust species. And I think they get that from the sulcata. So now let's go to the sulcatas and let's talk a little bit about them. We just have to do, I'm gonna clean out their little barn because it's time. There's a lot of manure in there, so I'll rake it all up. Now, while we're going, you can also see a couple other animals. We got the cherry heads, whom I don't worry about at all. And of course, the elongated tortoises. You see here, it kind of floods in here. These guys actually like it. Um, they are a forest species from the rainforests and forests of Southeast Asia. So those guys get a lot of rain, no issues. Now, there's some work going on over here. I hope you guys don't mind. I'll try and talk louder. But over here, I have the, I have the radiated tortoises over here. They're here temporarily because I was doing some work to the front yard. And what we've got going on with these guys is an interesting story. So these guys are from drier uh, forests and scrub forest in uh, Madagascar. That being said, the rain doesn't bother these guys at all, which is very interesting. Um, now, I don't let these guys get flooded out. I don't let them actually sit in muddy, mucky ground for a long time, but they do very well here in South Florida. Uh, no issues at all with any respiratory, no issues really with any kind of fungus growing on them. So very, very uh, happy, healthy little turtles and curious too. Uh, they're gonna be moving over here again soon as I have been growing the grass back in the front yard. So they're gonna get back uh, into that and I can show you right there, see that? All that beautiful green grass. That's fresh new grass because I tore up uh, the front yard because um, I had to put a new drain field in. And so that's what we did. And uh, yeah, so that's what's going on. Um, the sulcatas are coming along. I'll get to them in a minute, but we should, since we're walking by, have a little visit with our friends, the Galops and the Aldabra. Again, these guys, depending on what island uh, they are found, the Galops could have a more uh, rainy area. There they are, look at them. Let's go see them. Uh, here is Nostradamus, good boy. They don't have any water in here, which is no big deal because it's starting to rain again. And they've got their mud wallow, which they love. There's Darwin and there's Socrates, and they're all doing very well. The water doesn't bother them. This area doesn't flood, but right here, no flooding here, but right here we let it flood because they actually have dug it out to create a mud wallow. So these are the two galops behind me, Nostradamus, the Aldabra tortoise, uh, doing very well. Again, the rain not bothering them, no issues with them. Uh, beautiful, beautiful tortoises. But again, you don't want to just keep them, of course. I don't know if you guys, I, I have to say this because there may be some people out there um, that don't realize, but you don't want to keep your tortoises of any species sopping wet. Um, we're talking about, you know, just muddy, filthy conditions. Redfoots won't 
th won't thrive in that. Um, you definitely don't want any of that situation. Again, if we look at the front where the where the good old uh, radiated tortoises normally are, again, the water sheds off very nicely. So there's no area where it gets swampy. Um, and if you have an area that gets swampy, keep an eye on the tortoises. You don't want them to be staying there all the time in that stagnant water. Um, they could develop problems if they drink that water and it's not flowing through. They could get some kind of intestinal parasites. Uh, they could get funguses. And overall, it's just not a good scene. But here we come now, there's Lumpy hanging out. And here we come now to our sulcata enclosure. If you guys remember, if you've been longtime followers of the channel, I moved these guys from the backyard. Oh gosh, I wonder if it's just about a year now, I think. Maybe it even longer. But um, what I've done is I've moved these guys. And the reason that I moved them is because I knew I was gonna be digging that big gator pond in the back. I knew it got too wet. Here's Lumpy. So I moved them up front here. The water doesn't stand here. In fact, what'll happen is in really heavy rains, water will flow through here, go under that gate and into the very large pond. Now look at how much water is in the pond right now. I don't know if you guys follow my Instagram, but I posted a little video of the kids jumping from the beach over there to the island where that big cypress is on the middle. Uh, the kids could just jump over. It was less than three foot of water uh, in distance. They could jump right over it. Now it's like 25 feet of water. It's just filled up and that is within the last week. So it's pretty nuts. So what I have to do here is I've got to open the roof and I'm going to rake out some of the manure. I don't want these guys, you know, because it's impossible for me to have this be completely watertight. So what I've got to do or what I don't want to have happen is I don't want that manure to constantly be wet. Um, you know, I just, it's not healthy for the animals. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and lift this up. It's extremely heavy, oh, but we kind of got it up. Yeah, there's, so there's a lot of poops in here. And I'll show you what I mean. So they go in it, and it pretty much keeps the rain off of them. But I got to rake this out now. Um, I just don't want any wet manure there because it is waste, and you don't want animals living in waste. So I do this about once a week, and they can really poop it up pretty quick. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And uh, I will see you guys in a moment. All right, so we got it all raked out, much cleaner than it was before. Uh, and this will be better for the tortoises. I got to let this door down. When I designed this thing, I didn't really think about weight. I was just happy that I was able to make a door that could be lifted and closed, but unfortunately it's heavy. So I really do need both hands. Well, maybe not. Let's, let's risk it, shall we? We just throw this away. I lay that down there and then I do a little squat. Oh, that's loud. Sorry guys. Uh, anyway, here they all are. So again, uh, these guys do fairly well. They're adaptable. Now where they're from in the Sahel region of Africa, just along the fringe of the Sahara Desert, that southern fringe, all the way from West Africa to East Africa, uh, it is an area that will get seasonal rain. So these guys do encounter rain. However, the water doesn't last very long. So these guys will drink, 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 drink. Um, I found uh, in my years of keeping these tortoises, they love to drink from puddles that are agitated. So what I've done in the past is I make sure the surface of the water is rippled uh, either by hanging a hose in a tree and having it dribble down onto their uh, water or by the jet of water that comes in from my watering system I let it just skim the surface so it agitates the water because that's exactly what will happen uh, in the wild where these guys will wind up um, seeing puddles rippling and they'll just drink 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 and do their thing uh, this gal here she is an old lady she came to the United States at this size in 1977, belonged to John 
John Baylor, who was the head of the uh, New York Herpetological um, Institution, uh, or with the curator of reptiles at the Bronx Zoo. And uh, so this animal, she's an old gal. She's gotta be somewhere in the neighborhood of 80 years old. Um, so that's just an incredibly old female. Uh, she's had some scarring and a little bit of white fungus I'll get from time to time on these guys. Um, if you look at Brutus here, he came to me, he was living in New York, in Long Island, New York, and if you look at the indentation here, um, his shell is prone to get what's called scud, okay, this white fungus. It's kind of a superficial fungus. It doesn't really go into the bone, which is good. Um, it's just something that looks unsightly. If I were really concerned about this, I would go ahead and put um, like an antifungal cream on them, uh, but it doesn't really bother me. I've seen, uh, I have redfoots that get this from time to time. I've seen it in wild tortoises. Uh, it's not something that I freak out about, but if you don't like it, I would use athlete's foot cream, antifungal cream, and that'll cure it up. Of course, you gotta keep it dry, but you can see this indentation. What'll happen is water actually collects here and tortoises, uh, sulcatas in the wet weather will take mud and fling it up onto their shells. Now, why do they do this? It's another thing that I've seen them do over the years and I can't see, maybe I don't see any, but what happens is mosquitoes can actually get their nose, their proboscis, right through these little seams and they can extract blood from the tortoises right through their shell. So the tortoises throw mud up on there and they cover themselves with mud as a little extra layer of protection against any kind of parasites. And also I would imagine it cools them down as it evaporates. Uh, and it's just a, a fun thing they like to do, who knows? But this guy gets this scud uh, fairly often here. Again, I don't worry too much about it. It is the wet season, that's just what's gonna be happening here. So. There you go, we cleaned that off. Now what I like to do with all my, my uh, tortoise poop here that's turning into really good rich soil is it becomes a really good fertilizer or tortilizer. And uh, I take it, I'm gonna spread it out on some of the palm trees that are near my uh, garden pond, my uh, backyard aquascape pond, the rec pond. And it's just gonna be a great healthy fertilizer. I don't have to worry about chemicals or anything getting into the pond and hurting the fish because it's poop. It ain't going to be a big deal if it even does get in the water. It's no drama. So there you have it, everybody. Um, this is kind of the ritual you need to be prepared for when dealing with larger tortoises that like a more arid environment. Um, here in South Florida, we have challenges. It is not a perfect place for these tortoises. Of course, the perfect place for them is their country of origin. Uh, so we have to mimic that as close as possible. I try and do that by getting them outside. Um, keeping them in a drier area. Same thing with the leopards and leprechauns, uh, your Greek tortoises, your marginated tortoises, Herman's tortoises, all are gonna be animals you wanna keep a little bit drier. Chaco tortoises from South America. Um, again, guys, you can see this environment that they have here. All the water will flow down and go into the pond in the back. Uh, now, uh, in an extreme weather event, this will get you know, wetter. And if that ever happens with a hurricane or something like that, what I do is I pull the tortoises in, put them on up, and you can see how much higher the house sits, and uh, they go into that garage. So we've seen that before. I'm hoping we don't have a pretty crazy hurricane season. It is so much work. Are you gonna bite my rubber boots? You go ahead and have a taste, I don't mind. What are you gonna do? They're curious, they're funny, and wherever you're raking is where they're gonna wanna sit. So be prepared to move tortoises when you have to rake. Uh, yeah, so hopefully with the rain we're getting, the old timers in Florida say that if it rains a lot during the summer, steadily, uh, we don't get as bad hurricanes. But if it's dry in the summer, that's when we get some really crazy hurricanes. Um, and I have to wonder if there's any truth to that because in the what is it, 16 years I've been living here in South Florida, oh, excuse me, pardon me, Brutus. Sorry about that, buddy. Oh, look, Brutus. Brutus had a whole big clump of poop he's dragging under there. Come on, buddy. I want to rake that up. I got OCD, bud. We got to get that. We got to get that. Come on, Brutus. Oh my God, Brutus, you are an incredible specimen. So let's see if I can just do a quick scoop of the poops. I guess I raked it, but didn't pick it up. Oh, there you go. All right, Brutus, thank you. Thank you for that little surprise. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching. I hope this answered some questions. If you guys have any more questions, go ahead and throw them down below. Oh, in the meantime, I'm gonna pull this big pile of shit over to the um, rec pond and spread it out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on notifications. 
All right, well, as you can see, it's looking pretty ominous over there. So I'm gonna try and get this all spread out before Mother Nature spreads herself out on me. I'll see you later. <laughs>